Hi everyone, I am here today to talk to you about all of the books that I read in September. I am possibly wearing too many patterns today, but is that really a thing? I, I debate that. Interestingly, I don't know why, but I thought, okay, I'm going to do my wrap up. It's going to be quite quick. And for some reason, I thought I didn't have that many books to talk about. And But as you would have seen by the thumbnail, uh, there are lots of books to talk about. I think it's because I haven't read a book in two weeks. I'm filming this on, what is it, the 11th today? Is it the 11th? Yes. And I haven't read a book in two weeks. So I didn't read a book the last week of September. And I didn't read a book the first week of October. Uh, which is extremely unusual for me um, with book release. Um, and uh, reading that I've been doing for work because I'm judging a prize at the moment. Uh, I just haven't, and it's making me feel strange. I don't like not reading. But anyway, despite that, I still have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. I, I think I counted that right, 15 books to talk to you about today. I think it will be a shortish-ish wrap-up video because I have spoken about most of these in vlogs that I filmed throughout the month. I did two big reading vlogs in September, one reading hyped or potentially overhyped books. And then I was on holiday for a week and I talked about all of the books that I read when I was on holiday. So let me just go through these and I will link the reading vlogs in the description box, blah, 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 in the description box down below if you want to go and find out more. So right at the beginning of the month, I read my final three Nikki French books, and then I filmed a, a video talking about all of the books that Nikki French has written. So I will link that video in the description box down below. But the three final ones that I read were Land of the Living, which did turn out to be one of my favorite books by them. Not my top, top favorite, but one of my favorites. It's about a woman who has been kidnapped. And at the very beginning of the book, she escapes but it's dark and she can't remember where she's escaped from and the police don't believe that she was kidnapped at all. She has memory loss, she is trying to solve her own mystery. Yes, when I say it like that, it does sound a little bit ridiculous, but I enjoyed it. I listened to this one on audiobook and I thought the narration was particularly brilliant. I really enjoyed the reveals and um, all of the people that she went to visit, the stuff that she discovered about herself as she investigated. I liked that. I also read Catch Me When I Fall, which was not one of my favorites by them, but not right at the bottom of the pile either. Just sitting happily somewhere in the middle. This is about a woman called Holly who is putting herself in very high risk situations. She's going through these manic episodes and mental health is talked about a lot in this book, something that I think is handled quite well in this book and in, in a lot of Nikki French's work. And because she's doing high risk stuff, she meets some very questionable people and then stuff happens. She is a very complex character and I thought that the way that the story unraveled was rather satisfying. A lot of Nikki French's books rely on a woman who is not believed and even though it's quite a similar hook every time it gets me and I'm always infuriated on their behalf that they're not being listened to, that was the case in here and it was also the case in this book which is their most recent book which came out in September called The Unheard. This is about a teacher whose young child has drawn this really disturbing drawing and the teacher's a bit concerned by it, but her ex just thinks it's just a drawing and it's what kids do. But she is sure that her child has witnessed something horrific and she's determined to find out what that is. But she doesn't help herself by being a sleuth and doing things she probably shouldn't, which means that her own argument is undermined because people don't trust her. Again, a similar device as they use in a lot of their work, but I thought this had a greater payoff than in catch me when I fall. So this w was the top end of the middle when I'm listing all of their their books, of which there are 23, I think. If you want to know more about my thoughts on this book and the other ones and all of the books they've written, I'll link them in the description box down below. I also, um, and by them, I mean the video that I made. I also did listen to, re-listen to three Frida Klein books this month, but I will save you from speaking about those because... I've spoken about those before. Then where shall we move on to next? Okay, so Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake 
is here, but I haven't finished it. And the reason that I'm putting it in a wrap up here is because I know myself and I'm gonna put this back on my shelf and I am going to pick it up whenever I want to learn some really fascinating facts about mushrooms. Um, it's a very, very intense book which I like, but it's not the kind of thing that I like to read in one go. I felt the same way when I read Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari in that I wanted to absorb all the facts and I just thought if I read this all in one go, I'm not gonna remember everything. So I ended up just reading a chapter here and there when I when I wanted to be filled with all of these, all of this wonderful stuff. When I wanted wonderful stuff in my brain, I would go back to that book. And I think that's what I'm gonna do with this nonfiction book as well. If you want to learn some fascinating facts about mushrooms, then I would recommend, if you would like to hear more about this book, I did talk about it in a previous wrap up video because it's been sitting on my currently reading pile for a while. So I will link that video in the description box down below. Um, I would also recommend the audiobook too. Then when I was on holiday, let me talk to you about those books next. Is that all of them? Yeah, okay, so when I was on holiday, I decided I would take some thrillers with me because I'd finished reading all the Nikki French books and I wanted to find something else to really sink my teeth into. So I had some big successes and some non, non-successes, unsuccessful books. And two of the unsuccessful books for me, sadly, well actually there were three, weren't there? There were three. So let me talk to you about those first before I move on to the ones that I would really like to celebrate. I had two DNFs, Cat Step by Alison Irvine and To Dare by Gemma Wayne. I DNF'd both of these books, but for different reasons when we dive deep. But on the surface, I DNF both of them because I didn't really gel with their writing styles. So in Cat Step, I felt disappointed by this, I think, because I was so excited by the premise. The book says it's about a woman who moves to a small town with her young daughter. She wants to blend in and camouflage. She doesn't want anyone paying attention to her because she's escaping something from her past. But then one day she leaves her daughter in the car when she goes to a supermarket and the locals call the police and all eyes are on her. I just was, for some reason, really excited by that storyline I think because I thought it was going to be about how the neighborhood are all twitching curtains and looking at her similar with the next book as well um but I just didn't find the way that the story was unfolding very compelling um I didn't find the writing style particularly um beautiful or elevated and that would be fine if I was captivated by character development or plot but but none of these things were really standing out to me and I thought I can finish this book but I just don't think I'll love it. it, no matter where it goes, character-wise or plot-wise, I'm not gonna fall in love with it because I'm not in love with the writing style. So this particular one wasn't for me, but I'm sure that other people will obviously enjoy it. It depends on your taste when it comes to the way the stories are told. With To Dare, this is about three women, their relationships, their friendships, the secrets in their past, how their relationships with men have evolved over the years. And there is a lot of sexual violence, male violence against women, child neglect, child abuse in here. And when I'm reading about those heavy topics, I really need to feel safe in the hands of the author, that they are handling these subjects in a well thought through way and in a thorough way. I don't particularly enjoy reading about violence that's there primarily to shock the reader and perhaps at the same time to hold up parts of the narrative that are not strong enough to be there on their own. I feel like violence can mask that in a book because you're so taken aback by something that's there specifically to forward the plot. And that was how I felt about this book, that the violence was there to do that. Again, personal choice, but that was why that one wasn't for me. Then this one, I also didn't love, but I did finish this one. This is The Darkest Day by Hakan Nessa, which is translated from the Swedish by Sarah Death. Again, said this before, but that's an amazing name for translating Swedish crime. This is about a family gathering and these members of this family don't wanna to come together to celebrate two birthdays. So the dad and the daughter, they both share a birthday. They're using this as an excuse to get together. People uh, hate each other under the surface. Several relationships have fallen apart. They're pretending that they haven't. One of the sons has recently been on a reality TV show and has embarrassed everybody. And he in particular doesn't want to be there. I enjoyed 
learning about this family, how they do or don't communicate with each other. And then two of the family members go missing. The first half of this book is spent with the family. The second half is spent with the inspector. And this is the first in a crime series. We follow that inspector in the subsequent books. I didn't really enjoy the story from the point of view of the inspector. And towards the end, I was getting quite bored because the reveals happen in a strange way where you get to know more than the inspector does. And sometimes that can cause tension, but I just found myself wishing he would hurry up and catch up with us so that we could get to the next bit of the story. And that's not what you want to feel when you're reading a book. I also found the writing a bit sexist in places and there's incest and the way that queer relationships are discussed in this book is just a bit weird. So not one for me and I don't think I'll be continuing with the series but there were elements of this book that I liked. You'll be pleased to hear though that I did fall in love with several of the books that I read when I was there. Mrs March by Virginia Vito and The Talented Mr Ripley by Patricia Highsmith were my favourites from my trip away and I spoke about them in depth in that reading vlog. It was a very cosy reading vlog. I was in the countryside for a week in a cottage in the middle of nowhere. There were pigs, there were deer, it was a great time. So I will quickly summarize here, but Mrs. March is about a woman called Mrs. March who's married to an author. And she hasn't been reading his most recent books, but she likes the prestige that comes with being the wife of a successful author. She goes to um, a bakery the week after his new book comes out. And the woman behind the till asks her how she feels about the main character in her husband's new book being based on her. And she's absolutely appalled because she, though she hasn't read the book, she knows the main character is supposed to be awful, that she has questionable morals and is described as ugly. And she is so paranoid about what he thinks about her and what now everybody else must be thinking about her. It really is about her mental state. And it has a lot of similarities with things like Stepford Wives. There's a lot of mirroring with Jane Eyre going on. Um, I would say if you like Tesha Moshveg, you will really like this. Death in Her Hands has similar vibes to this because she thinks maybe a crime has been committed, but she can't prove it in the same way that Death in Her Hands follows that premise. I already want to reread this book. I just thought that it was superb. And it also reminded me of Meg Wallace's The Wife. I say that having not read it, but I have seen the film with um, Glenn Close, which is about how women are treated in literary circles. And I thought that this explored those themes too brilliantly. Loved it, recommend it. I think it would be a really good book club pick too. And then The Talented Mr. Ripley is a classic. I just hadn't read it before and I'm not really sure why, um, if I had to compare it to other books, I would compare it to Bride's Head Revisited. This is about a man called Tom Ripley, who's approached by the man of a son called Richard, who says, will you go find my son, Richard? He is in Italy. He won't come home. So Tom goes to try and speak to him. It's very old fashioned. Again, this is set in the 1950s. So it was really quite fun to read these alongside each other. Um, he is a liar. He is a liar and a sociopath. And he really is out to get what he can on this trip. He is not going there to convince Richard to come home. In fact, he's hoping maybe he can just integrate himself into his life. And then a series of unfortunate events happens. This is the first in a series as well. I loved it. Again, there are more thoughts in the vlog if you would like to go and find out more. And then when I was away, I also read this before we get on to the other books that I read during the month. This is Girl 11 by Amy Suter Clark. Again, I spoke about this in that vlog, but I enjoyed this very much. If you like listening to true crime podcasts, I think you would love this because it is about a true crime podcaster. She is a sleuth. She is trying to solve a mystery in her own time. And sometimes her viewers help her with that. Um, sometimes her viewers put her in danger. Some of this is told in transcript format. Some of it is just told in novel form. She is trying to find the countdown killer who's someone who murders women. Each one is a young, a year younger than the one before. I was surprised by one of the reveals and I guessed another one, but the one that I had already guessed really did heighten the tension. You know, I spoke about Hacker Ness's book and how if you already know things that can lessen the tension or really make you want to be shouting at the character in this book saying, why haven't you realized? And that was where I was at 
with the one that I'd guess it was really making me frustrated in a good way because I knew something terrible was going to happen and the characters hadn't noticed yet so I thought that was really well played by the author and the reveal that I didn't guess shocked me and that was brilliant too. So I really enjoyed this. It's also critically looking at the responsibility of true crime podcasters if they contribute to copycats, like whether the hype increases people's want to commit crime. I thought that was a really interesting and important thing to explore. Again, vlog will be linked down below. Then I also did a vlog where I read hyped books. One of those hyped books was one I just hyped myself and it was uh, Painting Time by Melissa Karengal. This is translated from the French by Jessica Moore, I think. Yeah, Jessica Moore. This one I would recommend for fans of Normal People by Sally Rooney. I didn't enjoy Normal People. I know most people did, but this is about four art students and their, their lives when they were art students and their relationships and the will they weren't they. It is very beautifully written. But there were reasons that it didn't pay off for me. And I spoke about that in the vlog, so I won't go into that here. But essentially, something that was very clever, a very clever device used in this book, which reflected the kind of painting that they were doing and mimicking, worked stylistically, and I would love to write an essay about it. But for enjoyment purposes, it meant that I didn't particularly like the direction that the book took. Uh, I didn't feel from a reading perspective it was very fluid and it meant that I couldn't really get invested in the characters lives and therefore didn't care as much as maybe the author would like me to care but again you can head over to the vlog to find out more I read Night Bitch by Rachel Yoda which I loved this is a, a a book that explores motherhood and the feral nature of motherhood. It's about a woman who's only referred to as the mother in this book who turns into a dog at night because she doesn't feel human anymore since having her son. And by giving into this instinct, she finds herself becoming a better parent, but grows further and further away from what society expects of a mother and alienates her. And then ultimately means that she's seen as a bad parent even though if redundant rules of society didn't exist people would see that her son loves the fact that she treats him like a pack animal there are pros and cons to what she is doing but i thought this was an absolute joy to read and i loved it i also read assembly by natasha brown and stylistically i think that it's really fascinating like with melissa carangal's book i'd love to write an essay on it but it hasn't stayed with me as strongly as some of the other books that I have read recently, possibly due to its length and mainly because it's not character focused and there isn't a huge amount of plot. Um, but I think for the number of pages that it has, it definitely packs a punch. I read the new Sally Rooney book, which I, I, well, I don't think I'm even gonna discuss it at all in this video because not only have I talked about it before in that reading vlog, but everyone else has talked about it. It was okay. That's my short review. It was all right. Finally, I read Lenny Henry's new book. This is his first ever children's book. It's middle grade, so for eight to 12, and it's called The Boy With Wings. I do freelance editorial work, and this is one of the books that I was working on in that respect. And this is such fun. So it's about a boy called Tunde and his group of friends, and no spoilers uh he really wants to run and play football and uh and then well i guess you can tell by the picture on the front actually something extraordinary happens when he starts doing that and his parents have been trying to dissuade him from doing sport for a long time he's not sure why that there were reasons there are reasons and then it explodes into this plot that just becomes absolutely epic <laughs> absolutely epic i would have adored it as a child i think that lenny is so good at writing children when i was a kid oh, and, and as a teenager i thought you know when i become an adult and i write books which which i do um for teenagers which i haven't done but i always thought when i write books for teenagers i'm gonna remember what it's like being a teenager and i'm gonna be you know down with the kids and i'm gonna be really cool no, uh, I, I I can write for young kids, toddlers and middle grade myself, but I'm not sure how great I would be at writing specifically for teenage audiences. But you can tell that Lenny is so happy in that zone of writing 
for and about children, uh, like young teenage kids um, or kids on the cusp of becoming teenagers. He's so good at that. Um, and I think the children are really, really going to love this. It's a lot of fun. And I haven't listened to the audiobook of it because I read it before it was a physical book. Um, but I imagine the audiobook is amazing because I think that Lenny narrates it himself. And he did the audiobook for Kit DeWall's My Name is Leon. And I love the reading of that so much. So if you're in the market for some middle grade, maybe check out the, the audio in particular. So those are the books that I read in September. Some I loved, some I didn't love. As much I will list all the titles in the description box down below I need to get on with reading in October not because I specifically want to hit a certain number or anything like that but just because I'm not quite feeling myself because as I said I haven't read a book in two weeks and that's very unlike me so I think I'm gonna go and edit this video and then then pick up a book I would love to know what you read last month or what you're reading now let me know in a comment down below let me know if you've read any of these um yeah i'm gonna go i will speak to you all later i hope you're having a good start to the week and sending lots of love bye